Welcome, I'm Tammy Grimes. For most people, memories are precious. And for some older people, memories are almost all they have left. But what about those whose memories are too painful to bear? Can such thoughts be suppressed? Locked away in some hidden corner, never to resurface? Or do they lurk in the shadows, eager to burst forth, simply waiting for some detail to bring them back in full color? Usually it's the latter, and often. As in the case of poor Alicia Wardlow, the sudden reappearance of a long suppressed memory is a terrible shock. The, these photographs, where did they come from? From a roll of film that I found in an old camera. At the same auction where my wife bought the old box of letters. Oh, dear Lord. Miss Winslow, are you all right? These photographs. Get them out of here. Get them out of my sight. Well, I, I don't Look understand. Get off, both of you. Please leave. Or I'll call the police. Our mystery drama, The Riddle, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Karen Thorson. And stars Patricia Elliott and Lloyd Batista. It is sponsored in part by Cat's Paw, Heels and Souls. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Many things can trigger a memory. The sight of an old hat, the sound of a car horn, even the smell of some forgotten fragrance. But recall varies, of course, from person to person. A particular object may remind you of one thing, any of another. Take the characters in our story today. The young Barton Baxter, the old camera he bought at an estate sale, brings back memories of his grandfather's attic. But for old Alicia Winslow, the same camera revives an old childhood nightmare. At first, no one knew why. But if you listen... It all begins at an auction. Six fifty from back in the corner. I have six fifty for old do I hear seven. Who'll give me seven for this old folding camera? A real antique folks. Seven. Seven. Seven dollars from the man in front here. I have seven dollars. Do I hear seven fifty? Who'll give me seven fifty for this genuine working camera? Kodak Autographic. It says right here on the nameplate. I have seven dollars. Do I hear seven fifty? Do I hear seven fifty? Seven dollars once, seven dollars twice. Sold to the man in the red plaid, seven dollars. Hi, Bart. How's it going? Oh, Penny, I just bought an old camera. That was you? Oh, Bart, honestly, I should have known. Known what? It was only seven bucks. And besides, it's a beaut. Pre-World War I, red bellows and all. Just wait till you see it. I already saw it at the start of the auction. And I've seen plenty more like it. All down in our basement. Uh, uh, not like this one. It's an autographic. Come on, walk me to the cashier. What, what's an autographic? Well, it comes with a little pen and an opening in the back so you can actually write on the film after each picture is taken. You mean, so you can write captions? Exactly. Uh, here, just let me pay my seven bucks to the lady here and I will show you. Now, here you go, ma'am. Uh, seven dollars. Uh, that's for our uh, number 173. 173, very good, sir. Let's see now, 173. That's uh, a camera. Ah, there it is. Oh, kind of like the one I had when I was a kid. Sign here. Enjoy your purchase, sir. Oh, that I will, that I will. Thank you. Now, here, Penny, look. See that little pen set it next to the lens? You just slide it out of its holder, flip open this little window in the back of the camera, and then... <laughs> Penny. Look, got a roll of film in here. Exposed film? Well, it'd have to be. The number on the little red window is already on nine. But if that film is as old as the camera... Well, all that matters is whether or not it's been exposed to the light. Well, I won't open it up until I'm inside my dark room. And... Who knows? Maybe I'll come up with some valuable photos. Well, can I take one right now? What, with this camera? Well, you can try. Here, here, just let me roll ahead so we can get to an unexposed part. Here. Yeah, now I try it. Now turn your face so it catches the light. Ah, that's it. Now, for the caption, I, I just write what I want in this little opening? You got it. Just press down good and hard. Hmm. Barton Baxter Camera Freak. Uh-huh. That's your caption? Hmm. <laughs> okay, then you asked for it. I'm going to do one of you. Oh, just stay like that. 
And now for my caption. Wife of Freak. <laughs> oh, come on, you old spencer. Let me show you what I bought. Look, here. A box? Why that? Well, just look at the carving. It's beautifully done. And it's perfect for storing your collection of stereographs. And guess what? What? My purchase came with a surprise bonus, too. Inside the box, a whole stack of letters all dated back in the 20s. Just like your film. Oh, you're too much. I can see you already pouring over those letters, piecing together some love story or something. <laughs> all right, come on, honey. Let's get home. Your box is just right for our stereographs. And I want to get back to my dark room. Penny? Penny, come here. Come and see. See what? These old pictures. What? But they're all streaky. Okay, come on. This is pretty darn good for a 60-year-old film. Look, look here. Even those snapshots of us work. And look down here at the bottom. See the captions. I can actually read them. <gasps> but look there. In the photo, standing behind me. What? That old man in the background. He followed me around the whole auction, trying to buy my old box. I kept telling him no, but he wouldn't quit. Oh, he really gave me the creeps. Well, maybe you better get that box appraised. Maybe it's valuable. I'll do it tomorrow. But how about these old photos? A anything valuable here? Well, not really. Except maybe this one. You know, because of the clothing. Oh, my gosh. Will you look at those outfits? <gasps> oh, and what a cute little girl. What's the caption for this one? Well, it's hard to read, but I think it says, uh, Remember me this way. Oh, how romantic. <laughs> oh, let's see the others. Oh, but, but aren't there any more pictures of people? These other shots don't tell me a thing. Oh, well, not unless you count the one of the statue, the Cupid. And what kind of captions are these? L dash dash P dash dash dash. Some kind of puzzle? Oh, probably for the little girl in the photograph. Well, let me see that one again. <sighs> Do you know what, Bart? I think these captions are in the same handwriting as those old letters I bought. Look here. See the T's? They all look like the same squiggly L. And none of the O's are closed off at the top. Well, well, Madam Sherlock. So whoever wrote these must have owned my autographic. Oh, have you read them? Every one. They're all addressed to a Miss Alicia Winslow and all signed Auntie M. I bet that's who's in this old photo. Some devoted old aunt and her young niece Alicia. Alicia Winslow. She doesn't... Doesn't that sound familiar? Of course it does. Winslow was my grandmother's maiden name. No, 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 no. Something else. Someone I've dealt with... Oh, I've got it. The old woman who lives down by the river. The one who sold me that old stereoptican. Her name was Alicia Winslow. The one with all the antiques. The one you kept saying you'd take me to see. <gasps> Bart, take me now. Take you where? To see Alicia Winslow. If these letters were really hers once, maybe she wants them. And the photographs, too. You could make up a second set, couldn't you? Well, it wouldn't be too hard. <laughs> I could give her a call. Bart, do. Maybe she's not the same Alicia Winslow, but at least I'll finally get to see her antiques. Here it goes. You remember your promise. Of course I do. I'm here just to admire, not to buy. And you won't buy any more antiques until you sell some of the things we already have. Not unless I open an antique shop. Well, hello, Barton. Do come in. This is Baxter. I'm Alicia Winslow. I'm delighted to meet you. But please, call me Penny, if you'll call me Alicia. Here. Why don't you two sit over there and... I'll bring in the tea. Oh, Barton, just look. <gasps> she has those old leaded glass bookcases. <gasps> and I bet that's a Victrola. Oh, this place is a gold mine. Well, my dears, I hope you like lemon cake. I just happened to make some this morning. <laughs> Help yourselves to cream and sugar. Oh, really? You're too kind. My wife is already ecstatic at the sight of all your antiques. Well, I'm the antique in this house. <laughs> Compared to me, all these things are modern. <laughs> Uh, your husband said something about some old letters addressed to Alicia Winslow? I have them right here. 
I found them in an old box that I bought in an estate sale. What estate? The old Farnsworth place. You know, the big stone house on the hill over in Southington. That's how it's known now. The Farnsworth estate. Did that place used to have some other name? Well, its real name was Pond Hill, but most people called it the Winslow estate. Winslow? But then... Did you used to live there? Well, my aunt did. And after my parents died, I did too for a while. Well, then these must be your letters. Penny, tell her about your grandmother. Oh, well, I don't know if there's really any connection, but my grandmother's name was Emily Winslow. Her family came from Rhode Island, I think. But so did mine. My Aunt Maud's parents moved here from Newport. Aunt Maud? Did you ever call her Auntie M? Now, how did you know that? Are those... Are those letters from... They're all signed, Auntie M. Here, take them. You probably read them all long ago, but they might make nice keepsakes. I never received them. But weren't they all already open? Every one. Well, then, why didn't you ever receive them, if you don't mind my asking? Because when my Aunt Maud finally married Oliver Farnsworth, he could not stand me. He made her send me off to boarding school when I was only 11 and made me stay there, even on vacations. It was only at her deathbed that I learned she'd been begging him to let me come home and that he'd kept all the letters she wrote me for his own information. Oh, what a horrible story. Why would anyone be so cruel? He was after her money. He'd been recently widowed and had a young son. And when he met my poor aunt, she was the solution. Oh, at first she was thrilled. He was handsome and charming. He promised her everything. But her letters to you sounded so unhappy. Uh, oh, I, I... I hope you don't mind. I did read them. They sounded unhappy because she was unhappy. And not long after that, she began to fade. You mean that's why she died? Well, the doctors couldn't explain it, but I knew. Her poor heart was broken. And Farnsworth and his son inherited her money, her jewelry, even Pond Hill. Oh, but why would they get it all? Uh, unless, of course, your aunt broke you out of her will. There was no will. Or if there was, Farnsworth destroyed it. Oh, the whole thing was awful. I vowed never to marry, and I didn't. But enough of all this. At least now I finally received my poor dear aunt's letters. Well, let me give you these photos. It's our guess that this picture here might be you and your... Did I say something wrong? The, these photographs. Where did they come from? From a roll of film that I found on the camera at the same auction where my wife bought the old box of letters. Oh, dear Lord. Oh, Miss Winslow, are you all right? These photographs. Take them out of my sight. Take them out of here. And Go. And don't bring them back, ever. But, but I'm sorry, I don't understand. Don't get off, both of you, please. You must leave or I'll call the police. What a strange ending to an innocent visit. Penny and Bart were convinced that their old letters and photos would give Alicia Winslow a pleasant surprise. But instead, their appearance inspired an outburst of anger and fear. Is old Alicia senile? Or is her fear justified? We shall expand on all this in Act Two. Some people love antiques for the quality of their craftsmanship. Others love them because they have history. For Penny Baxter, it was both. And those antiques whose history could be traced through some clue in their crafting were always her favorites. The old box full of Alicia's letters. Now there was traceable history. Penny was thrilled at the chance to hear old Alicia's story. Little did she realize that what seemed like a strange family history would turn into an ominous modern-day history and would threaten not just Alicia, but herself and her husband. Well, now, don't forget the photographs, Bart. Oh, right. I still can't figure out why they threw such a scare into Alicia Winslow. That was some send-off she gave us. Well, it's my guess that whatever she's scared of, it's, it's probably all in her mind. She's become senile. Hey, Penny, I thought you locked up. Well, I did. You saw me. Well, then why isn't this door locked now? I tried using my key and it just opened. Oh, no. What? 
Barb, what is it? Take a look. Oh, we've been burgled. Oh, they got my cameras. I'm going downstairs. Bart, be careful. What, what if someone's still down there? No, don't worry. Don't worry, nobody's down here. All my equipment's still here. Oh, Bart, I'm so relieved. Maybe they never even went down there. I sure went through things up here. Oh, what a mess. Hey, can you tell if anything's missing? Well, not yet. The TV, the stereo, they're all in their places. Uh, let's go check the bedroom. Oh, what kind of burglars were they? My jewelry's still here. Huh. I don't know. Well, none of our clothes have been touched. But look here. They did go through my desk. All the papers are disturbed. And the books in the living room bookcase were all on the floor. And that's the first thing I noticed when we came in. Bart, you don't suppose they were after those those letters? What letters? Alicia's letters, the ones that came in my old wooden box. Oh, but, well, why would anyone want to... I don't know why, but I think I know who. Who? That old man who kept trying to buy back the box, remember, I told you? He followed me all around the auction, and he was still right behind me when you took that snapshot. Oh, Penny, come on. I, well, I admit he was weird. But I can't imagine an old geezer like that breaking into our house. Well, then who else? Well, I don't know yet, but I'm sure going to find out. Oh. Hello. Barton Baxter. Uh, who's calling? Uh, this is Alicia Winslow. I just called to apologize for my abrupt behavior. I don't blame you for being upset. No, no, no we're not upset. I, I sound angry because we've just been burgled. Oh, no. You mean while you were here having tea? Yes, that's right. Did you lose any valuables? Well, so far nothing's missing. But everything's so topsy-turvy it's hard to tell. They went through all our papers. Your papers? Oh, that's right. As if they were looking for something specific. Penny even wondered if they mightn't have been after all those old letters of yours. Oh. But listen, I better hang up and call the police. Oh, Barton, please, just one moment. Oh, Penny may be right. That's what I called up to tell you. Those letters and photographs may be worth a lot more than you realize. Don't you see? That's why I was so abrupt with you. I was scared. No, I'm afraid I don't see Scared of what? Oh, it's too involved to explain over the telephone. But if you'll just come back to my place with the photographs, I'll explain everything. Back to your place? Or when? Now. I mean, as soon as possible. You see, if, if you've already been burgled, uh, I may be next. This is all very strange. But you just keep calm, Alicia. We're leaving right away. Come on, Penny. We're going back to Alicia's. So I got it, but, but what was that all about? Well, I'm not sure. Until now, I was convinced she was senile. And this phone call was real. She's freaked out about something. As if she knows she's in danger. And there's no time to lose. Goodness, it's you. Did you bring the photographs? Yes, I've got them right here. Oh, good. Now I know all this seems most mysterious, but I can't explain it. First, let me apologize. I knew the moment you left that I'd behaved badly. It was the shock of those photographs. They were so unexpected. I started thinking that maybe you two weren't as innocent as you said. Oh, but I'm getting ahead of myself, and I'm terribly rude. Please do sit down. No, just tell us your story, and we'll help all we can... And in the meantime, I'll just have a little piece of this cake here. Oh, good. Yes, yes. Please do. You too, Barton. Uh, just let me put some water on to boil, and then I'll tell you everything. You were right, Bart. She really is freaked out about something, but I still don't understand why. There. That's done. Now, let's see. Uh, I told you about Oliver Farnsworth and how he married my aunt for her money. And I told you how I was brought home from school to her deathbed. The first time I'd been allowed to see her in two years. It was a terrible shock. From the healthy, handsome woman you saw in that photo, I came home to find my aunt shrunken and faded. How old were you at that time? I had just turned 13. She knew Farnsworth would wind up with everything, but she told me not to fight him. He's too evil, she said. He won't let anything stand in the path of his greed. And besides, she said, money doesn't bring happiness. 
You'll be much better off if you work for a living. Be self-sufficient. Well, it was good advice, and I took it. And added one little twist of my own. I never married. Do you ever wish that you had? Well, perhaps I could have found happiness. Oh, oh dear, there's the kettle. Here, read this while I go get our fresh tea. Well, what's that? One of her aunt's letters? Oh, I thought you read them all already. I did. But I didn't read this one. It wasn't in the box I bought. This isn't a letter. It, 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 it's some kind of riddle. Well, let me see it. Three times around the L blank, P blank, due north from B blank, B blank. All right. It's just another word game. Alicia, look. This riddle is just like the captions under those old photos. Exactly. Here, give me a teacup and I'll finish my story. This riddle letter wasn't among the letters I gave you from the box. No, no, it wasn't. It was never mailed. My poor aunt pressed it into my hand just before she died. And at the same time, she whispered, The camera. Make sure you take the camera. Those were her last words. But then, well, that means... The captions must have something to do with this riddle. If you solve one, maybe you'll solve the other. Oh, I was sure of it as soon as you showed me the photos. Of course, back when my aunt died, I couldn't figure out what a camera could have to do with my unsolvable riddle. I knew which one she meant. The old Kodak we'd had so much fun with before I was sent off to school. But try as I might, I couldn't find that old camera anywhere. It wasn't until you came here today that I realized you'd found it and the key to my riddle. But why did you get so frightened? I would think you'd be happy. I would be if I didn't know that Farnsworth is ready to pounce. Alicia, old man Farnsworth died years ago. I mean Farnsworth Jr. Remember I told you? Oliver had a boy my age from a previous marriage. Michael Farnsworth, his name was. And he hated me from the moment we met. But why should this uh, Michael Farnsworth worry you now? All those days are over and done with. Oh, uh, so I thought. So just a few weeks ago, the last I'd heard, he'd gone off to Europe or somewhere, probably Monte Carlo. All my aunt's money thrown away in gambling casinos. And then suddenly he was back here, in this house, demanding that I turn over my aunt's amethyst brooch. What brooch? I thought you said that the Farnsworths inherited all of her valuables when she died. They did. All except for that brooch. It was her most treasured possession. A big stone of rare color, set in the finest gold. It had been in her family for years. She'd always said I would inherit it. And the Farnsworths knew that. But then somehow the brooch disappeared. The Farnsworths searched me, they quizzed me. They never found it. But when Michael Farnsworth finally went broke from his gambling, he remembered. He came all the way back here to scare the brooch out of me. And what happened? I told him the truth. That my aunt must have hidden it, that I'd never found it. I also told him that if he ever came here again, I would call the police. I thought it was a trap. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, think nothing of it. What's more important is that we solve that riddle. (laughs) Who knows? Maybe it's a guide to your aunt's long-lost brooch. And maybe that old man at the auction was old Michael Farnsworth. Alicia said he was her age. What old man? Well, an old man who followed Penny all around the estate sale, trying to buy the box full of letters she'd just purchased. We figured he was some kind of antique dealer interested in the box, but now I'm beginning to think that he was after the letters. I'm sure of it. And what's more, I think he's the one who broke into our house... He must think that those letters hold some kind of clue. You know, he obviously doesn't know about the camera. But I'm worried. Whether he knows about it or not, the man is obsessed. He'll keep coming back. And if he ever finds out that we've been here with Alicia... Oh, you're right. He could be dangerous. Art, should we leave? Oh, no, no, please. I'd be lost without you. It's the brooch, don't you see? Even if I'm finally able to solve this old riddle, what good will it do me? I can't go hunting up buried treasure at my age. So you must help me, please. I won't have any peace until I find my aunt's brooch. According to Alicia Winslow, finding her aunt's brooch is more important than her own personal safety. But she hasn't said why. Is it money? Is it sentiment? 
Is it because her old mind has gone senile? Or is it for revenge to inflict some final punishment on old Michael Farnsworth? Penny and Bart don't know the answer, but we all will very soon once we hear Act Three. Riddles are innocent pastimes, favorites of children. Sometimes questions, sometimes poems, sometimes incomplete sentences. They can take many forms, but whatever their format, their intent is to test ingenuity, to amuse. Rarely do riddles attract adult attention for more than a moment, and rarely do riddles serve as clues to some higher purpose. But in the case of our mystery, exceptions prove the rule. When we left Penny, Bart and Alicia, they were concerned for their safety. But when we rejoin them now, their attention will be focused on solving a riddle. No, no, I've got a better idea. We'll just push all these tea things aside and use this space. It should be just wide enough to spread out the photos. I'm sorry they're so streaked, but the film was awfully old. Well, here we are, all seven, ready for inspection. Don't you worry, we'll make sense of them somehow. Penny, you've got the riddle. Why don't you read it aloud? All right, here goes. Three times round the L blank, P blank, due north from B blank, B blank. Three trees toward the R blank, P blank, then halfway to the W blank. Now cross that line with C blank, B blank, when it's high noon in the D blank, and dig down deep. You'll see my love. Till then, I'll never tell. Well, it's definitely some kind of a nap. On that dig down deep part. Oh, it sure sounds like buried treasure to me, but where do we start? Well, maybe with the first line. Three times round the L blank, P blank. Hmm. There must be something in these photos. You can walk around three times. But that's the problem. You could walk around just about all of them. Now, look here. There's the pond, and the well, and this statue, and there, that's the bell old Bessie would ring at mealtime. You could walk around that, too. So you do recognize most of these photographs? Oh, my, yes. So that means you should be able to solve all these captions. Look, let's, let's forget about the riddle for now and concentrate on the photos. All right. Which one first? I'd say we could eliminate this one of Alicia and her aunt, right, Bart? Yeah, but try this one. Uh, oh, yes. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, now, let's see. B dash 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 dash. B dash dash dash. Oh, I'm afraid I'm not very good at this kind of thing. Wait. Didn't you just say that was the bell old Bessie would ring? Yes, but so try Bessie's bell. Oh. That fits in the dashes. Oh, for mercy's sake, so it does. Nice going, Penny. Come on, let's uh, let's do the next one. Well, this one is the pond. I used to spend hours wading through all the lilies, catching frogs. There were lilies? Oh, dozens and dozens. We had to cut some of them back so the pond would... Oh, I see what you're getting at. L dash dash dash. P dash dash dash. Lily Pond. You see, you're good at this after all. I'm going to start filling in the blanks in the riddle as we go. So, what's this one? W dash dash dash. Oh, that's easy. I already said it. The well. I used to throw pennies in there and make wishes. Let, let's see. What about this one? It looks like some kind of garden all fenced in. RP, says the caption. Oh, with lots of dashes. RP, that's the room. Here, try this one of the statue. C.B. Hmm. I bet the first word is Cupid, but the second word, B dash dash. Oh, that's a tough one. Let me see it. Oh, that's easy, too. Cupid's bow. My aunt used to tease me some night while I'd be sleeping. This Cupid would let fly an arrow straight from my bedroom and I'd be in love. Just like that. Do you realize we've got five out of six? The blanks are all filled in, but one. Oh, so let's finish. Here, Alicia. This one's the last one. Oh, I'm afraid the caption's too blurred to read. 
Oh, but maybe you can decipher the picture. I can't say I recognize it straight off. The whole thing is blurry. Well, then why don't we use the riddle to help figure it out? Look here. From the blanks I've already filled in, you can see it's a poem. A poem? Penny's right. Bell, well, tell. So this last photo should rhyme with all those words. What rhymes with Bell, Alicia? Well, let's see now. The photo does look like some kind of a forest. Bell, cell. Oh, I've got it. Bell. This must be the circle of trees that my aunt called the Dell. Alicia, you've done it. Here, let me read it. Three times round the lily pond, due north from Bessie's Bell, three trees toward the rhubarb patch, then halfway to the well. Now cross that line with Cupid's bow when it's high noon in the Dell and dig down deep. You'll see my love till then I'll never tell. What a wonderful poem. And what a complicated treasure map. Uh, no, no, even, even though we've solved the riddle, we still have to make sure we interpret the directions correctly. Hey, l- like this first line. Three times round the lily pond. Well, the only way to make sense of it is that we're supposed to measure the distance round the lily pond and multiply it by three. And then pace out that distance heading due north from Bessie's Bell. Oh, my goodness, you two are clever. What about this part? Now cross that line with Cupid's bow when it's high noon in the Dell. I think we just have to make sure we're there at high noon. And, and wherever Cupid's shadow falls, that's where we start drawing our line. Now, if we do that, we'll end up with two lines, one heading toward the well and one heading away from the Cupid. And where the lines cross, X marks the spot. Bart, I think we've got well, it. No, no, not yet. But I sure plan to be back tomorrow morning. Waiting for high noon. Oh, wonderful. The sooner the better. Just watch out for that Farnsworth fellow. Something tells me we have to move fast. Twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Thirty-one. All right, I've got it, Penny. Thirty-one pieces. So then, three times round the lily pond would mean... Ninety-three paces? You got it. What? No, no, don't talk. I've, I've got to count out. Ninety-three paces heading north from this bell. One, two, three, four... Bart, quick. Stop counting. Somebody's coming. Huh? Where? Over there, by the trees. Oh, Bart, it looks... It is. It's the old man from the auction, Michael Farnsworth. Don't let on, you know. Hello there. Hey, this, this here is private property. You're two trespassing. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. P- please excuse us. We we heard the estate was for sale, so we were just taking a look around. Well, it's already been brought. I'm, I'm the caretaker here. You better get off before I call the police. Uh, we're leaving now. Uh, come on, Bart. Tell me you said the place has been sold. That's what I said. Somebody bought it this morning. That's too bad. It's a beautiful property. But there's one thing that puzzles me. The real estate agent told me to look for a statue of Cupid out here in the garden, and I I can't seem to find it. Cupid? Well, yeah, uh, there used to be one right over here. Somebody must have bought it. I mean, see there, you can still see the old base sticking up out of the grass. It... Hey, tell me, why are you asking? Well, it's just that I, I collect old statues. But if the statue is sold, too, well, uh, <clears throat> well, there's not much left here to look at. Uh, come on, sweetheart. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute there. Don't I know you from somewhere? I, uh, I can't remember where, but, but anyway, uh, we're sorry to disturb you. We won't trouble you again. Barton, Penny, it's not noon yet. The buck already? Well, we ran into old Farnsworth. At least we think it was him. He was prowling around the property. And he had the nerve to pretend he was the caretaker. Oh, but you should have heard Bart. (laughs) I told him we were thinking of buying the property. I think he believed us. And then Bart got him to point out where the old Cupid once stood. It's not there anymore. Oh, no, we'll never solve the riddle now. No, no, Alicia, you don't understand. The statue is gone, but the stone base it once stood on is there. All you have to tell me is which way the statue was facing. Facing? 
It was always facing right toward the house. That's why my aunt said his arrow would fly straight into my bedroom. It was pointed that way. Oh, perfect. And you know what? I just realized we don't have to do this at high noon. Why not? Because at high noon there won't be any shadow. No, we just draw our line straight out. The same way the arrow was pointing. From the base of the statue straight toward the house. Oh, Bart. I'm scared. This place isn't so friendly when it's dark. Well, it's a lot friendlier now than when Farnsworth was with us. Okay. Okay, start counting. I I'll lay out the string so you can walk in a straight line. a girl. One, two, three, four... Forty-six, there. Now, is the string stretched good and tight? Like a tightrope. Good. So, what's the next part? Now, crossing that line with Cupid's bow when it's high noon in the dell. Okay, okay. So you stand here while I stretch the second string between you and Cupid. Oh, you should have been a detective. Oh, maybe so, but don't move, huh? Like, I'm almost ready. And it's crucial that we hit the right spot. There. There, my string crosses your string... Right here. Bart. Oh, then this is where the brooch is buried. Well, let's hope so. Now, where's that shovel? I've got it. Here. Oh, oh wait a minute. Oh, it's a chest. It feels like one end of a small wooden chest. Wait, I, I think I can get it free. Oh, there. Oh, Penny, we've done it. Does it open? It has a small padlock, but, but listen. Oh, there's something inside it. Well, we'll have to wait until we're home before we break it open. I don't want to use something as crude as a shovel. Let's go. I'll fill up this hole while you're gathering the string. Remind me to get this lock fixed tomorrow, Penny. It makes me nervous leaving it open. Oh, you're right. I forgot all about it. Goodness, I hope that old Farnsworth doesn't show up tonight. Don't worry. I'll stick a chair under the doorknob. Now, come on. Let's open this chest up and see what we've got. Uh, here, hand me that hammer. <coughs> there. Uh, neat as can be. And now... <gasps> oh, Bart. It's, it's beautiful. I can't believe it. We actually found her aunt's amethyst brooch. I wonder how much it's worth. The stone is awfully big. Oh, big enough to make me nervous. Enough gawking. I'll feel a lot better if we put it away. I know. I'll hide it down in my dark room inside my enlarger. Hey, stop where you are. Farnsworth. Where did you come from? You're thieves. I heard the whole thing. Now you give me that chest. Hey, give that back. That belongs to Alicia Winslow. I knew you two were up to no good when I caught you today. And then I remembered. You were at the auction. You bought those letters. And you found the map to a jewel that is rightfully mine. What's Alicia's? You won't get away with this, Farnsworth. Oh, oh, oh be careful. The stairs. Farnsworth. Penny's fallen. I didn't push him. All of a sudden, he just clutched at his chest and he fell. Bart. He's... Oh, he's... He stopped breathing. Oh, Bart. Uh, we'd better call a doctor. Penny, I... I'm afraid it may be too late. He's gone. He's gone for good. The coroner said he died of a heart attack. And they found pills in his pocket. Apparently, he'd had this condition for years. Oh, what a sad way to go. No chance to make peace with the past. Even though he was cruel, I can't help feeling sorry. Well, you're a good woman, Alicia. But Farnsworth did deserve what he got. And it does mean that your worries are over. And you have your aunt's brooch, just as she wanted. You know, my aunt always told me, look deep into this stone and you'll see your future. Your future? Really? Well, what do you see in it now? I see... I see Auntie M beckoning. 
sickening. Alicia. Alicia, are you all right? She wants me to join her, go with her. Quick, Penny, get some water. No, no, no water. Just, just take the brooch, please. Take the brooch? But, but Alicia... That's why you found it. You were meant to have it. Don't you see? You're a Winslow, Penny. And my life is complete, thanks to you. No. No, you can't die now. Alicia, please. <sighs> It's too late, Penny. Oh, she knew it was time. She even said that we had to move fast a few days ago. Do you mean... Do you mean she knew she was dying? I'd say she welcomed it. But until she had the brooch, she couldn't stop living. Well, she's at peace now. Here. Take the brooch, Penny Winslow. You deserve it. Alicia Winslow is dead, but her spirit lives in the amethyst brooch that she bequeathed to her newfound young relative, Penny Baxter. But what will the brooch mean to Penny? Will this remain one of her treasured antiques, rich with history? Or will she choose to sell it, using the proceeds to start up her long-awaited antique shop? More on this when I return shortly. I've had my share of winning teams over the years, but one of the best teams ever fielded, in my opinion, is not at the stadium, it's in the library. This is Eric Parsegian, and I'm here to urge you to check out the teamwork at your library. You'll discover a winner. If you're looking for the answer to a question, any question, just dial the library's telephone reference center. In most libraries, there are specifically trained teams who can find the information you need. Maybe your reading skills aren't up to par. Don't let that stop you from getting ahead. Start with the library. Many offer reading programs, and if yours doesn't, the team of librarians will know where to send you. And just in case you've forgotten, the library is one of the nation's great inflation fighters. Almost all services and programs are free. Whether you need to know how to play a better game, how to shop smart, or how to save energy at home, the library's team can help you score. Use your library and support its team. A public service message from the American Library Association and this station. After Alicia died, another letter was found. This one written by Alicia herself on the morning of the very day that she died. It willed all her belongings to Penny, not just her brooch, but her antiques as well. And with the sale of just a few pieces of furniture, Penny had enough money to lease a small shop. Today, Penny's business is thriving, and Bart has more time for his darkroom. And as for the amethyst, well, that's not for sale. Penny and Bart often stare into its depths, remembering the woman whose advice was, be self-sufficient. Our cast included Patricia Elliott, Lloyd Batista, and Elspeth Eric. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. The law has its resources. Why, what you are saying is, I might as well give up hope of ever recovering my pictures. He has stolen the pearls of my collection. Inspector, I would give a fortune to get them back. If you feel there is nothing the law can do to him, then let him name his price. Now, that is a reasonable idea. Do you mean it? Every word. Every single word. Yes, I mean it. Why did you ask? I have an idea. Uh, we'll discuss it in due time. Only, Count, not a word about my involvement to a soul. If you wish to succeed. I understand. You will be using underworld contacts, informers, and so forth. I swear to you, I shall catch him. This is Tommy Grimes inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, please, children. Children.